the two things that we are going to get to that aren't news, but uh, these are questions that were sent to you. By the way, if you want to send questions into the show, it's questionsfordutch at gmail.com. But you had a couple of questions that you wanted to answer, and the first one was, years ago, wrestlers, in order to make their bookings, had to drive their own vehicles to the events or ride with other talent. And number one, in your opinion, how many miles have you driven or travelled over the lifetime of your career? And how many run-ins with Highway Patrol, and were any of them serious? I estimated one time how many miles that I traveled in a year. And years ago, we'd wrestle seven days a week. Sometimes those trips were like 200 miles one way, so that's 400 miles in a day. Others were like 250. And I'm going to estimate here, but I think I have probably traveled close to 2 million miles. And this is when we're just in cars. If it was 100,000 miles a year, which was which easy to do, that would have been almost uh, two million right there. I think maybe, yeah, maybe more. And that's not counting the, uh, the plane rides I've taken, but I didn't take plane rides. So I got with until later on with WWE, uh, WWF. We never flew back in the territorial days. We all, always drove. Did you not fly in Florida so, though? I thought Eddie Graham had a plane at one point. Well, well oh, I did there. Uh, Eddie Graham had one. I flew with him, but he would only like fly to Miami, the long ones. And that's, that's how I went to really know Eddie the smart man. You would have liked him. Uh, and Ernie Ladd, he would pay for a, he would play, pay for a plane and he'd take me cause he'd like me and he wouldn't charge me nothing. And you know what the plane costs to fly to Miami? No. Like 50 bucks. $50, maybe 75 But he would pay that just so he, he could he could talk to me. I, I love Dirty. But talking about having trouble with the highway patrol, yeah, after driving so many miles, yeah, you, you become visible to the highway patrol. So one night I'm riding with Undertaker before he was Undertaker. I think he was uh, Mark Calloway then. We were in coming back from Louisville. And there's a, a cop pulled in behind me, and, and Mark saw him, and, he's, and he, Mark was driving. And he looked in his mirror and he said, there's a cop behind him. I said, don't worry about him. We're almost to the Tennessee line, and he'll have to go back. He'll have to turn around. We were actually at the last exit where he should have got off. But right before we got the exit, here comes the blue light on. Pulled us over. And then now the flashlight, the searchlight came on strong. Then we heard the the, the uh, trooper's voice over the loudspeaker. Driver of the vehicle, turn your car off. Take your keys, drop them on the pavement. <laughs> and then he says, and, uh, "Exit." Uh, he said, "Exit your vehicle, facing the front of your car, with your hands in the air." I said, "What the hell is this? This is serious." And then I heard other sirens coming. Wow, wow, one's off this side, one's off the other side. So he got him back there, searched him, <clears throat> took him to the back of the car. I think he handcuffed him. I'm not sure. Then I was in the front seat, and we had a guy called Action Jackson, a big old kid out of Dallas. <clears throat> he was in the back, weighed about 300 pounds. So they told me, passenger in the front seat, exit your vehicle, facing the front with your hands in the air, and, you know, back up. So I got out with my hands in the air and backed up. Guy come over and put me down on the hood, searched me. Of course, he searched Mark too, handcuffed me, my hands behind my back. So what the hell? Now I heard, and I got to throw this up. We all had do rags on. You know what do rags yeah. are? Well, we all had do rags. So we looked like gang members, I guess. <laughs> so we kept hearing these sirens coming. I went, what the hell? Something's bad. Somebody had to get robbed or something. Somebody got shot or whatever. And I bet by the time in five minutes, they were like five police vehicles there, two state patrol, two County and one city we was in right outside of Franklin, Kentucky. So they got Fra action Jackson out and he's a black guy with a do rag on. And, and one guy, pulled in he came up the own ramp you know the i mean the off ramp he come up the own uh the off ramp and put parked into the into grass and then he got out then i heard this it was a shotgun he was chambering around 
I went, what the hell? So they come back and I said, what's it? Shut up. They wouldn't let me say nothing. They said, search, and, and so, you know, now, now the rookies came, and he said, search the car. So they started searching the car, searched all the way through it, all the way through it, the trunk and everything. Finally, the kid looked up, and he, he was a deputy, said, boss, I don't see nothing. He said, search it again. Well, they searched it, searched it, searched it. And to our benefit, there was not even a beer in the car. They wasn't a joint in the car. There were no pills in the car. The only thing they found, because I, I dipped, uh, you know, tobacco, mm -hmm. all they, all they found was a, a spit cup. That's all they found. So finally, I'm trying to talk to the guy and I said, sir, my name is Dutch Van Tail. And then he said, shut the fuck up. We know who you are. I went, Oh, not pretty much on chit chat. <laughs> are you? So he, he didn't find nothing. So they came back and he says, I said, well, why did you stop us? He said they had a report uh, from a truck driver that a car fitting the description of the car we were in and three guys that fit our description. And we had the dome light on too. Hmm. And that's how he could, he could, you know, identify us. He said, we were going down the road and we had a gun and we were brandishing that's the only time I've ever been associated with the term brandishing. We were brandishing a gun at the other motorist. So they pulled us over and that's what they were looking for. They were looking for a gun and, and we didn't have one. So he said, you're free to go. I said, okay. And they said, we need to ask you something. They knew who we were. They said, can we get some autographs? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, can we get some autographs? And then somebody asked me, they said, did you give him an autograph? I said, hell yeah, I'll give him an autograph. <laughs> just, just let me go. Here you go. What's your wife's name? What's your kid's name? Uh, well, we were gone. But when he pulled, he when he pulled us out, I forgot to bring his up. The guy had his gun out, his 357 or what nine millimeter. He had it pointed at Mark when he got out. Then when I got out, he had it on me. And you know, they they kind of get on their knees and brace and because I could see him from, even though the spotlight was in my face, I could see him right there. So that was a scary, scary moment right there.